Doug, did you want to start out with the boilers and, and then we'll get into room 13 first? Uh, sure. Um, just for quick background, uh, we've uh, sometime, uh, I think it was in February, uh, seven years ago, it would have been 2015, uh, there were two new boilers put in at the Y or at the Y, not at the Y, at the uh, school. And um, they're condensing boilers and so forth. And when we first got involved, we thought they would, uh, that was at least two years before we got started. We thought they'd last forever. Um, so we hadn't built into our budgets, any of our budgets replacing those two boilers. Um, about, uh, Four weeks ago, we started getting uh, air messages uh, where the boilers were having wooden fire occasionally. And um, there, are, there are two, there's Larry. Uh, there, were, there are two boilers there, and one would fail, one wouldn't, and uh, when one wouldn't fail, the other one usually would. That's why we had back up two boilers. So it really wasn't a problem. Um, but then we started getting it where both of them would fail at the same time. And then we get a call from the Y saying it's chilly in here. And um, so we got uh, Dax involved to look at that. And it appeared at first it was a sensor issue. So they ordered new sensors and they were cleaning them and so forth. And and finally, we got it so one of the boilers wouldn't fire at all. We were limping along just on one. And then about a week ago, um, maybe maybe a week and a half ago, um, they were servicing the one boiler that had the uh, that had, wasn't working at all. And and doing that, they learned that there were. Uh, holes in the heat exchanger, the state, uh, stainless steel heat exchanger. So then our focus shifted on to, well, how do we repair them? And so we got prices for uh, the heat exchanger and see uh, how long it would take. And we just for uh, comparison, we said, well, let's find out uh, how much it would be to replace these boilers in total. Uh, one of them, the one that we were had torn apart, and how much would it, another manufacturer cost? Um, because uh, Dax had had good experience with uh, other another manufacturer, Navian. So we got those prices, and uh, we learned that the heat exchanger uh, would cost, uh, in rough terms, about six thousand dollars, and would take up to twelve weeks to get, um, and to replace it. Uh, the boiler entirely with the Navian in round terms was about $7,000. And to replace it with a, uh, re the current Lockenvar boilers were no longer fabricated, but looking at another boiler from uh, Lockenvar, um, that was about 8000 So those, that's the rough range. So we put our heads together, and the lead time on the Navian boiler was about a week because they had them in stock uh, over an Elkhart um, and we just would need some controls that would take about uh, a couple of days to get. So after some discussion we elected to go ahead with the boiler replacement and in, while we were waiting for everything to get here so that they could schedule that last week, um, the, boi the other boiler stopped firing altogether also. <laughs> So we had one day where we uh, were uh, essentially without uh, boiler capacity. And, uh, but they uh, came a day early. They came last Thursday and managed to install the new boiler by the end of the day, and we were up and running. And uh, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, it leaves us with a situation where uh, we just have one boiler, which is sized for about 
maybe three quarters of the capacity of the building. And um, so we need the other boiler as well. And of course, the same issue applied when we got into the second boiler. We thought maybe we could repair that one. But again, it was the heat exchanger had rusted out. It was full of pin oil holes, so it's spraying the coolant water into the combustion chamber. So uh, we're waiting now for a pricing, um, another pricing quote uh, on that. But we're thinking that we would like to do that as soon as possible. Not so much that we need it before the next heating season, but simply so that we can guarantee that we can get the same model and we can be assured of the compatibility because the, the two boilers work as a team. They share loads back and forth. Um, but right now, um, it seems as though uh, the one boiler is maintaining temperature uh, and is responding well, so we're happy about that. Uh, in that process, when the one boiler was out, we did have one unit, uh, one heat pump unit in the court, uh, courtyard room that got uh, some ice built up of it and a ruptured a line, and we shut that up off and cleaned it up, and they were able to clean uh, repair that line today, so that uh, heat pump is running again um, as of about noon today. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, it from a uh, 10,000 foot level. We did investigate whether or not the old boilers were could be replaced under warranty, and they were outside of the warranty uh, plus, we don't believe uh, that we could have established uh, that we the operation of the boilers would have satisfied uh, the terms of the warranty because uh, when those were put in originally, the building was operating without any treatment in the water loop and no corrosion prevention. And so that probably uh, damaged, it's our theory because we spent a fair amount of time um, um, blue skying why they failed earlier than we might have expected and the most likely thing is that they were operating without water treatment and probably um, provided uh, a corrosive enough at atmosphere that uh, it um, affected the life of those um, heat exchangers. Uh, these condensing boilers, high efficiency boilers, particularly the earlier versions were famous for failing earlier because it's a, the, uh, it's a very toxic, acidic environment that they create. So um, that's where we are with that. So anybody have any questions? Doug, just yes, to sir. interject now, you mentioned the heat exchanger or the, uh, that we have in the uh, courtyard room that they repaired, do we have, we only have what, one other one right now that's that's uh, not functioning properly? Yes. Correct? Yeah, there's one of the three units that are in the Y uh, space uh, that is not, it, it's a fan uh, can be turned on, but we have the heat pump uh, part of it turned off because it failed, and um, they looked at it cursory, and would, it would ha we'd have to drop it down. So that's so much work and um, time, and the two that are in there uh, may, may not be adequate in terms of um, uh, how it's um, the heat is provided uh, spatially. But there's adequate heat capacity in there with just the two out of the three running. And we were hoping that this would be an opportunity to uh, research and find um, a, a different type of uh, heat pump unit that would uh, be quieter, less noisy. And so that research is ongoing um, right now. But it, uh, so other than that, all, there are 23 of those, I think, in the building. And uh, right now, 22 of them are op operational. Okay, thanks, Doug. You do you want to mention uh, then while you're on a roll? Do you want to mention room thirteen? Uh, sure. Um, we had uh, inquiry. We being uh, Joy and uh, Joe and I and Larry about uh, the possibility of um, 
doing some cleanup in room 13. And so we looked at it and kind of scoped out the work and um, thought, well, maybe this would be a good time to get a um, contractor who was um, focused on this um, type of interior renovation. So we talked to Michiana Construction, uh, uh, the uh, head of that, uh, Dale Brown, came out and uh, met with uh, me, and we went through the work, and he gave us a quote for that, uh, cleaning up that closet, removing the two unit ventilators that are in there, uh, patching some of the drywall, removing uh, some of the items that are on the walls, and, uh, and then cleaning up and painting uh, the entire space. And so we talked, Joy took that, talked to the park department and park department um, authorized that work. And it started about uh, just about two weeks ago. And uh, they completed it uh, last Friday about noon. There are a few items that are left to be done yet. We've got a couple of electrical outlets that we're waiting for the electrician to come back and finish up. But the bulk of the work is done. And um, the only thing that we talked about that hasn't been done, the big item in there might be the flooring. And that's an ongoing discussion about uh, when that be, not, might be done. The floor that's in there is not is probably 35, 40, 50 years old and is not in great shape, but it is usable. And uh, so uh, we do have some time to study that. Um, Joy, you're your liaison, I guess, with the park department, you might offer your perspective on that work and uh, yeah, how. I would say the park board is uh, very willing to pay for whatever we decide would be the best flooring um, in there, but we didn't budget for it this year, so we might have to put it off until beginning of next year. So how does the, how does the room itself look to you? I think the room looks great. Uh, uh, I was over there and it was still a mess, you know, the floor was, uh, they were still finishing up painting and stuff, so everything was pretty messy, but uh, the paint, uh, the uh, shelves in the back, the closet area, I think it all looked really, really nice. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think it's uh, almost like a new room. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, there are a few, uh, I mean, the floor would make a difference too, but. Yeah. Um, Joe and I were kind of talking about the floor and, you know, we want to make sure that it's a floor that, you know, the Irish dancers can use as well as, you know, the kids who are painting and that kind of stuff. So it's got to be something really durable and, and, uh, easy to clean. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can talk about that some more going forward. It, nobody, has anybody used the room yet? Yes, they had the uh, art decoupage first Saturday art class in there this Saturday. And uh, they said it went really well. Good. They were, yeah. they were happy. Good. They were all happy. Okay. Okay, great. Um, all right, the other thing I was trying to think of, Doug. I'm sorry, somebody else want to say something? Hey, Joe. Yes. I just want to let you know that your new member, um, Melanie Davis, is here in the town hall with me. Um, so she is present. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, do we want to mention uh, the doors, Doug, that we have uh, contacted Civic and uh, trying to get to the point where uh, those two doors that we're going to put in the, in the courtyard, uh, I, have we, we've ordered them already, haven't we, Doug? Yes. Uh, um, uh, had uh, Bill Defuniak uh, sign the purchase uh, request, and uh, that was given to um, Meyer Glass, I guess two weeks ago now, and they so they put their order. They came out, and did their final measurements, and put their order in. Um, and I confirmed with uh, uh, well, 
some of the money for that uh, is it right now we're hoping will come from Civic Association. So we um, sent um, a note to Paul Applegate um, officially thanking them for the uh, furniture in the courtyard and uh, asking for their participation in the, uh, purchasing those doors. And I think you all got a copy of that. Um, and um, I spoke with um, Dennis Schultz from Meyer Glass, and he agreed that it was fine if we had, if when that work was completed, if one check was from Civic Association and one was from the town of Long Beach, he had no problem with that. Um, so we haven't. We haven't gotten a date of when he will receive those or he can schedule the work, but hopefully it'll be before too far into the springtime here. So when we know more, we can report it to everybody. Okay, thank you. And so just to uh, mention it, that we're, we're think, we're considered, well, we're pretty sure that the doors will be paid for through two different approaches. One through, as Doug mentioned, through the Civic, and also there was an amount of money that the town uh, received from the art fair. And we're saying with the monies from Civic and the monies from the art fair, we won't, uh, in, in one sense, we won't be hitting the, the, the money of the, of the town itself. And we don't have to win. We don't have to uh, go against our budget because we think it's you know two sources of money that came in a different way. And while I'm mentioning that, we should even uh, is uh, thank uh, Sue um, for the work that she did with the art fair and uh, and with Civic. So we appreciate that from Sue and. Uh, also, just to mention the art fair, to throw that out, that Joy, I believe the park board is going to continue the art fair. And, yep. and I think that's a good thing. It was well, it was well, well appreciated by the town. And uh, so, Joe, so that, uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, this year's art fair is going to be on uh, Saturday, July the 30th, and we've lined up a um, Valpo Velvet ice cream truck, and the gentleman I talked to said they need two, hundred, two 110 regular outlets. Um, I was wondering if one of you guys could walk me through the electrical out there, because that was our one snag last year. Uh, if one of you would have time to let me know what's available out there. Are there two 110 regular outlets out there that he can have access to? Yeah, I think there's a half a dozen circuits, and there's like 15 uh, outlets in that box that, that's out there that Civic uses. All we have to do is open that box up and throw the breaker downstairs to activate those receptacles. Oh, okay. So, so Joy, I would recommend that either Doug or I would work with you and you know we'd go in the basement and take care of that. Now the only the only question I have is uh, that's an assumption of that the this vehicle whatever whatever it's going to be is going to be in the proximity of that big box. I don't know where because I think nowadays because of all the extra work that was done on the basketball court over there, I don't know how willing anybody is to have uh, heavy uh, trucks or whatever roll across that, because that used to be the avenue. Uh, Joy, do you? Yeah, um, I, I, I wouldn't expect it to be that far back. Are there outlets by the tennis courts? Okay, because, because Doug, if you remember, we also have, uh, and the, there's, there's two, two outlet, two different locations. One location we have is midway in the park, that one uh, light pole that's there. Yeah. And I think I showed you that before, Joy. Yeah, that's, that's the one with the, 
we, we used that one last year. Yeah, and that has, I believe, uh, two outlets in it. Now, I don't know, Doug, to be honest, if those are two separate circuits or it's just one circuit. I thought they were two separate circuits, but we could look into that. Yeah, I don't know where those are fed from. I, I don't know if those are fed from the building or... No, I think... I think where the where where where, where the circuit breakers are is in the uh, pole by the tennis courts. I know that for a fact. That's where yeah. you, that's where you turn those on and off. Okay. Well, if one of you guys walk me through out, you know, just walk around with me outside there, and uh, so I can familiarize myself with how they work and what turns them on and stuff, that would be great. Right. Because because the other thing we also have. I believe is by the, uh, what do you call that little seating area that has a roof to it? I don't know if there's a special name for that. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is, I believe there are a couple outlets there also. A billion. Yeah. So I think there's some out outlets there also. Okay. And also, and also, I just wanted to mention, just so the park board is, isn't neglected, we do appreciate everything that the park board has done to help us with room 13 and with the other projects that we're doing. So I just wanted to throw that out to the park board. Okay. okay um, other things that are going on is um, now, I don't know if we mentioned this. I don't think I did, but I apologize sometimes that sometimes I do repeat myself. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, I, for a better word, a squirrel catcher out at the building. I don't know if we talked about that before. And he came out because we were we were seeing some, well, we'd see a lot of nuts in the building, but I mean, but we saw some nuts that the squirrels eat. And uh, then we figured out, holy, we got something going on here. So I called the guy and the guy came out and outside by the by about the mid Mid section of the uh, uh, the uh, the Y on the outside, you could see a way that they entered. He put a trap up there, and we waited the first day. We collected uh, two squirrels. Uh, I don't know what they are, chipmunk squirrels, whatever. Two critters, and then we said, "Oh, that's great." So the next day we didn't get anything, but then lo and behold, the third day. Then another one decided to pop up. So we ended up catching three critters through through that uh, that hole over there outside. Uh, and they were on time, and they sent the bill to the town. So we're all set. And I don't know if you know, normally the way these guys do their work, they have a one-time charge to come out, and then they charge you per, per critter that they catch. So... So that appears to be under control at this time. Now, in line with that, just so everybody knows, I had J.B. West come out and look at that stretch of the fascia and the soffit that runs along that whole side of the building, where the Y is and where room 7 is and uh, where the door is over there. And uh, he's looking at something to... I mentioned to him earlier today to make sure that w we contain anything from coming and going through the soffits and the fascia, whether whether it's critters or, or flying objects or anything else, wasps or bees or anything. So he's going to come back to us with a proposal, J.B. West is, to fix to fix that. So we'll we'll see how that how that turns out. The one thing which is good, we have somebody that does this, that's their, one of their main things besides roofs is J.B. West, is you also have to keep the circulation up in the fascias and the soffit. And so he's going to come back to us with that. Any questions on, on that part? Okay. Then um, the other thing that came up from, from Deanna, and I don't know, I'm not throwing this on us. I'm just throwing it out for any suggestions and how we can handle this is that we know in the front 
of the three doors where you enter the enter the building, which is very close to the recreational room there, the gym or whatever you call it, there are bricks and that have names in them. And uh, I think it used to be uh, with Debbie that they used to, people would come and want to buy these bricks and give a donation. I don't know if it was, who the donation went to, the historic department or to the building. But now uh, Vienna's gotten a couple calls that people want to buy these bricks. And uh, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of Debbie. And then I and then Vienna shared with me that the bricks are whatever they do to them, they're in South Bend. And then they expect us to go out there and whoever it is to pick it up. So I'm thinking we need some evaluation of the whole project. And I really don't know where to go. And I'm looking for maybe Joy, you might have a better feel for it. I don't know, you know, with Debbie how how active she is and how much uh, we should do, but maybe I should say one thing before I throw that out to you, Joy, that as I was talking with Doug about it, I brought up the project, and then he had said that on our list of things that we, we might do uh, is in front of those three doors, you do have like a, I don't know if you, Doug, would you call it a, a, a scoop, a stoop or something? There is just a very small, uh, apron or curb or something and one of our intentions is for the handicapped that we would get rid of that and have it smooth because you don't want it could be tripped on and then doug i don't know if you want to enumerate that if we do something like that we might intrude into this brick area doug do you want to say anything yeah it's it's just um i knew that when we we have two areas on the outside of the building that we wanted to we've identified a long time ago for handicapped accessibility one is at this front door and the other is on the entrance over by the um by the cooling tower and uh, both of those have uh, you know a little uh, stoop and with a step of about three or four inches it's not huge but the, the concrete in that area is also deteriorated, you know, from just age and salt and so forth. So we thought someday we're going to eliminate that step and put some. And if we did that, I was thinking we'd have to coordinate that with those bricks out in front and make sure that we didn't lose anything. So now somebody is, if we're going to buy more bricks, it might, we should look at the same issue now. <laughs> rather than someday, I guess. Is. Yeah, the, you know, the park board has talked about this because people come to the park board often and want to do like a memorial bench or something like that. Uh, there's And there's just not enough room for as many benches as people want to put out there to memorialize people. But we did talk about possibly one of the projects after we finished the stops was going to be maybe replacing the existing path that's in the park out there with pavers and maybe could do the brick memorials out there um so there's just uh, we know there's not enough if people really want to get involved in this at the spot where they're at so i think the park board will kind of uh i mean i'll take on that project and and see you know what we can do about it and i'll talk to debbie and i'll come back and let you guys know where we're at okay because um i guess right now and you might want to touch touch definitely touch base with deanna i guess she's got two or three uh people that that want to do something with the bricks so we i know debbie won't use to order them like every quarter because there was a you know processing fee or something, but um, then I think she turned it all over to Bill. So yeah, let me get it all figured out and uh, okay. Because, okay. Because because the one thing, and again, that's up to you. But like I say, I was just thinking about it. There's probably more than one place that does this bricks. I would assume so. And it'd be great if you if we found somebody in Michigan City instead of South Bend. Yeah, I agree. 
if we want to travel all the way out to South Bend to pick up the bricks, if it happens. But that's this is probably from Rose materials, and so I don't think you're going to find anybody in town anymore for that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So then, Joe, you'll have fun. Okay. And I used to live in South Bend. I'm familiar. Yeah, this is actually, um, it's close to South Bend, but it's off of 20 on the way there now. So. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to jump in here, too, for a second. Um, I just ran across a guy that's working for Rose, and he's over in Chesterton. So there might be a chance where something might be able to be shifted to the Chesterton store from South Bend. And I can check with him if that's joy. When the time is right, let me know or I'll give you his name. Okay, great, Larry. Thanks. So that would save some mileage. And there's good places to eat over in Chesterton, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then are you saying then that, that our budget would have to compensate and, and yeah. offer the dinner for both of you? Yeah, we'll turn in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, are we done with that, Joy, then? You're, you're, you're running with that? Yeah, I'll run with that. Okay. Now, let me just throw out a couple more things. Um, we have, uh, as soon as uh, room numbers, I don't know how familiar people are with room numbers, but uh, used to be uh, where Amy, Amy Shin did her exercise, and that actually, it's, it's on that side of the building where Sue Bissing has one room, Ping Pong has another room, and then uh, uh, the next room is room nine. So those rooms are like 11, 10, nine, and eight across that wall where there's four rooms, used to be classrooms. And uh, the uh, Lorelei uh, has been using room nine and room eight, but she can't, she can't financially afford that any longer. So she's moving all her stuff back to room eight. And we've been working on that we're gonna have a room nine open. Hopefully we can uh, get uh, Laura Lee to be moving back shortly into room eight. And with that, I've had two uh, different uh, people come up to us. And one is a, uh, a, a woman that does sewing and the, she does various different things with the sewing uh, and she creates funny hats and other et cetera things. And uh, I chatted with her briefly and, you know, I, if I asked the right questions, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have something where at eight in the morning till six at night, you got 25 people in there with sewing machines. So I asked uh, uh, Doug and Joy that we'll set up a, a, a meeting with, with the three of them so then you guys can talk to her and get a feel for what her project is. Okay, and then we'll, we'll go from there. And then the other possible interest, and I, I, it's not uh, definite, is... Uh, there's a lady that works with the Y. I think her name is Lacey. And uh, she also has an activity that's not with the Y because I, I would never, uh, if somebody's doing something with the Y, then, then the building would never want it to be involved in that activity because that's the Y's activity. But she's told me that she does this separately and she has a room. And it's a, I guess the exercise is very, uh, uh, exhilarating and uh, it's uh, it, the only thing I'm concerned about well the, the exercise is I guess what they call it pole dancing so she you know and I heard that it's it's you know a tough exercise but anyway the main concern I have with the pole dancing is I would assume and that's what we got to look into which we're not there yet is how do we connect these poles to the ceiling because obviously we have drop ceilings, so we'd have to go through the drop ceiling, I would imagine, and go to the main ceiling and connect them. So those are the two uh, people that I briefly talked to, and, and Doug and Joy 
we're going to set up a time for you guys to talk to the hat lady. Okay. Any, okay. Any comments on that? Okay. While we're talking about the rooms, uh, room seven, which is the room uh, that used to be the uh, uh, the, uh, the teachers' lounge and and etc., is uh, we rented that out to to a nice, uh, uh, very nice lady who's running. Uh, and I, I apologize. I always Joy, tell me what she does. Reform Pilates. That's it. Thank you. I never can remember reform. So she does reform Pilates. Uh, I've, I've been in the room just to see it. And she has two of some type of machines. I would have no idea how to use them. And she has started some classes. So we're wish, wishing her luck. And uh, we'll, we'll go forward. And, and I'm glad that, that she's active. And, and, you know, we'll encourage whatever we can if anybody wants to do reform Pilates. And the only thing that we have to work on, Doug, which we'll have to figure it out, maybe we'll do it later in the spring, but is that uh, we did promise her that she, she possibly could have hot water in her sink because she has a sink in that room. But uh, as we know, we, we don't have any hot water boilers. You know, we just have, that's all been disconnected. So we'll have to talk about that. So that's that's that. I think I only have one other thing left on my list, and uh, we had mentioned, and I know uh, uh, Joy and Doug, and I think Sue, uh, when she was with us, uh, you guys looked at the ceiling in the uh, hallway, that first hallway when you walk in. Uh, yeah. And you guys talked with us some ideas. I'm. I, I'm not against any of those ideas. The only thing I thought, and maybe it's just a way, uh, a suggestion, and then we could always talk about it, is maybe the first thing we could do is before we do anything major, because we're spending, you know, with with us uh, having to do these boilers and possibly another uh, heat 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 uh, exchanger that uh, that we're spending uh, money that maybe uh, an easy solution temporarily would be just to replace some of the ceiling because some of those ceilings are, I think it was through rain or something, are really stained. And maybe we could just go through and replace some of them and clean it up. And then it, we, we could get maybe some su suggestions if we wanted to paint the walls. So I'm just throwing that out. I'm not saying that's what we should do. But for you guys to think about it, let's talk about it. And and the, anyway, any comments on that? I like the idea because I'm I'm not a fan of a drop ceiling. Yeah, that that was the same feeling I had. That you know, I I think it again. Everybody, there's different opinions, but I think a drop ceiling would change. Wait, well, anyway, change the effect of of, of the hallway. It, it would make it a smaller hallway, but I don't want to. So anyway, so, so Larry or Doug or, or anybody, you know, let's, let's think about it and figure out, you know, what would be a good thing to do. Okay. And I don't think I have, God forbid, you guys aren't going to hear my voice. I don't think I have anything else to say. Does anybody else have any? Oh, comments. Uh, I'm trying to think. No. Okay. Anybody else? I've got nothing. We already talked about my electric. Okay. And then, oh, the other thing I should say, it's it's nice to welcome a new member. And uh, maybe next time when we're when we're when when we're not doing Zoom and we're alive, we could all we could all see each other and meet and and discuss things. Sounds good. I appreciate that. This is Melanie Davis. It's nice to meet you all. I do hope to uh, meet you in person. I do have a question, Joe. Um, uh, I was asking Mark about minutes. Are there minutes like for the last six months or so that I might be able to read? 
we so that I can get caught up on what's been considered and where we're going and what we're okay, doing. Let me let me mention to you, we're very casual and we don't take minutes. I don't send out an agenda and we don't use Robert's rules of order. Well, uh, some of that's probably a good thing. Um, um, so perhaps then I can just meet with you all individually or each individually to get sort of an idea of, um, or just get acquainted, number one, and number two, to get an idea of kind of the overview of, of the board and uh, what's been critical and what you've been doing. Well, I'd like to get a little up to speed uh, quickly. Okay, because uh, I could add here, we do uh, have a pretty good paper trail with a lot of things that we've talked about, which we share by email. So if you get your email address to us, we'll add you to the list and we can send you some uh, things that might help. Yeah, great, all right, I will do that. And, and Joe would be the repository of that? Yes. Okay, fabulous. All right, yeah. well, if, if it's okay with you all, I would like to reach out to you individually um, to get acquainted, number one, and then just to kind of get the lay of the land. Um, I've been a resident here for 15 years, so, and I use the community center, which is one of the reasons I express interest uh, so I think we all have a, a very soft place for the community center in our hearts and souls, and uh, I'm delighted to be able to make any contribution I can. So I'll be I'll be in touch. I'll be in touch with okay. you all. Just, just to give you, and again, I, I'm speaking for myself, but I think the the thought or or the feeling towards the building. Uh, I joined. Oh uh, gosh, what was it? About five and a half, six years ago. And our goal, the number one goal at that time, because there was somebody at a different, at a meeting, and I can't remember what the meeting was, and it's not important, but it just stuck in my head, and it doesn't matter who the person was, but they were talking about the building and, and how it was costing the town money, and one person said, well, maybe we should just tear the building down. And, uh, that, you know, that's an opinion, anybody can have an opinion, and after that, uh, I thought, and then I talked with Bill and then talked with other people on the committee. And we said, you know, the, the building is, is, is a good building. We're lucky that we have the YMCA there. There is very good to have them in the building. And we have, the, we, as a goal, as a goal for myself, I, let me just, I don't want to say for everybody, but as a goal of, that I had, is always how do we make this damn thing break even? That that yeah. that was the goal. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're we're not here to make money. We're just here to try to break even as best we can. And the building is made up of different parts. And like I say, one of the parts is the YMCA, which we're very proud of, and we're glad that they're with us. And the other part, another part of it is that there are uh, maybe three or four different tenants that rent some some of the spaces and then there are other parts where different groups uh pickleball and etc uh reserve time in different places in the gym or in room 12 or in room 13 and then we also have the park board who's very active and they bring activities to the building so that that's what the building is all is all about is and what we're we have been and we probably still are is keep the thing running well and try to keep the thing so financially it's above water and we all come up with great ideas but sometimes we we have to be prudent because uh we don't have the money or whatever and so I don't know, does anybody else have anything? Oh, we also have, what is that called, Doug, that uh, Mary Carroll came up with, um, that little little blurb we came up with, Doug? We have a mission statement. Yeah. I just read, I read it, I read it a half hour ago. I thought the meeting was over there. So as I had a little spare time, I read the mission statement. It's great. I think yeah. it's fabulous. And let me tell you, Joe, I mean, I fully support the fact that the community center 
is with us. It has stayed with us and will be with us. Uh, my understanding is that it's on the National Register. I don't know if that uh, came that to is, fruition. That is true. Right, right. So, I mean, it's going nowhere other than up. And um, through all of our efforts, uh, we can make this, you know, prosper that much more. So I fully endorse the fact that it's in the center of our town and, and, and it should be. Does anybody else want to make any comment about the building except me? I just actually have a quick question of more procedural than the general building. So if somebody else has a general comment, please jump in. I'd just like to say welcome aboard, Melanie. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Now, I, I have one question. Thank you. <laughs> I've been away a little bit. How about the... Um, opportunity to all gather again. I mean, has the, the town come up with a plan yet so we can all meet, you know, granted equal 12 feet between us or something? My understanding is that's getting closer to that. I was possibly, well, again, time will tell, but I was possibly hoping that maybe next month might be in in-person meeting over in room 12 or now that we have a beautiful room 13 we could meet in room 13. great also that'd be great yeah good to see you mark very nice to see you so just a quick question um march 21st uh, which i think is a monday we're going to be upgrading our Comcast, um, and that they're coming to Long Beach on March 21st between 8 a.m. and 12. Doug or Joe, I mean, do you need to be there? It's our upgrade on internet speed and all that good stuff. So, I I wouldn't think so, but okay. I, yeah, I I agree with Doug. I believe that everything you have is is self-contained within within your room yeah. and I believe Doug correct me if I'm wrong that their Comcast comes in outside right there by by that large box that big electric box but I don't think they'd even go outside I think everything would be in the Y itself yeah it's just an upgrade phone system and speed internet speed so yeah because, because I remember that one day was just a while ago I just remember it that Angela was looking and I said, Angela, look underneath the desk. And she found whatever she was looking for, yeah. whether, whether it was a modem or something. Yeah. So I think it's all, it's all in there. Okay. Just wanted to, just wanted to check. So I have a question for you, Lori. Yeah. Uh, now that we're coming into springtime, uh, do you see your hours um, changing going forward here in the near future? Well, it's back to staffing more than anything else. So I'll have to be working with Angela and staff to see if we can hire more to work longer. I think we just finally solidified the staff group we have. So hopefully we can start expanding the hours back to where they were. Okay. And, and Lori, good question, Doug. Lori, does that also mean possibly back on Sunday? If we can find somebody to work the weekend, we'd be happy to. Yeah, I know. That's got to be tough. Yeah. Okay, and then the other thing is, as I looked at that smiling face of the chief, it just reminded me. But it's out in the it's out in the distance that uh, the elections are going to come up, and I think the one of them is in May, and the other one is November. Is that correct, uh, Chief? Yes, Joe, that's correct. And I reached back out to Taylor, and she's going to get a hold of us about a week in advance so they can set up the night before. And uh, right, that's exactly. That's what that's what's always happened is they come in the night before and they ask if you know what what equipment they might need an extension cord or something once in a while and then we set it up and the thing that that you could do or your crew because they're around they always wanted to be there like at five o'clock in the morning and nobody was there so maybe but we'll talk about all this later yeah, we can, we'll be more than happy to let them in. And then also, Joe, I just want to touch on the um, street light for the parking lot, the additional one that would point towards the YMCA entrance. The engineer from NIPSCO tells me that should be installed in the next two to three weeks. So Super. we'll have that installed for you. Did we, did we ever get into any, convince them 
that they never did replace the other light that exists with, with a LED light? They upgraded it to a uh, different halogen bulb, so I right. asked that both the bulbs match. He put in um, a request for me, so I'll have to wait to hear back if they're going to do that for us. Yeah. No, I don't know, you know, dollar-wise, but I would think the halogen is, is more expensive than the LED, but it would be nicer if we had all LED. That's my opinion. Yeah, my, my selling point to them was that we wanted to have the same color of light coming from both light fixtures, not exactly. two, two different e ones we have. Excellent. That's, that's why you're the chief. <laughs> Good advice, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Joe. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>